What's up, Rockstars? Today I'll be painting the Venerator from Oathsworn, one of my favorite minis. The first time I saw him, I just knew I had to paint him. I mean, he is super duper cool. So let's go ahead and dive into what colors I used, the order I did it in, why I did the techniques that I did, all of that. We're going to cover it all right now. Thank you to my channel sponsor Into the AM. As a company that believes hard work and a great product is a proper way to conduct business, I am delighted to have them as part of the channel. They have some of the coolest graphic t-shirts around and an absolute best fit and feel that has continually exceeded my expectations. With new shirts arriving all the time and other products like boxers, hats, and even a monthly shirt club, I wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Check out the link in my description of this video for an exclusive 10% off everything they sell. Now before we get into things, a quick shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that this channel is possible. If you appreciate videos just like this, if you'd like to see me do more painting videos again, then please let me know in the comments below. But there's also in the description below is a link to my Patreon. Even a dollar a month would help greatly. Thank you so much. Now let's dive right in. I'm actually going to be watching and commenting. So it'll be a little bit different than some of the other other paintings you may have looked at, but I'm excited to see. So I started out with Iron Warriors, which is a really fantastic Citadel color. It's a very dark color um, that uh, just uh, you can highlight a lot, which is really good. It has a little bit of brown in it too. What's nice about that brown is it helps things look a little bit less clean. I mean, this is a grim, dark world. I mean, this guy is not from like some really pretty place. Uh, you know, the, the the world that you inhabit in Oathsworn is is just not a, a it's not a place that sees a lot of sunshine and rainbows and, and birds chirping in the air nicely. Um, uh, so I, I think this is a quite fitting color. It's like a base color. And anytime I, you know, I, I try to paint dark to light if I can. And then of course, deep to uh, outward. Now we're doing some dark flesh. This is on his, uh, his kind of like tunic and cape and stuff like that. Uh, dark flesh, again, another great color where I can go darker and I can go lighter. It's keeping with that little bit of a brown tan kind of look, a very earth tone like here. Um, which is very fitting for him. And obviously I'm working off of the official art there. Fulgrite copper, you'll notice part of that I skipped. Uh, I already started to paint him in a different copper. Ended up being too orange for me. So I went ahead and then halfway through, goes like, no, this is wrong. Got this Fulgrite copper out. It's a much more gold-like copper. If I were to describe it as anything, a little bit more yellow, less orange. Um, I'm gonna highlight it with gold and then kind of hit it even with some silver as a highlight. We'll get to that in a little bit, but uh, this is a good foundation for it uh, to get as essentially as dark as it's going to be. And there's going to be some washes I'll apply later to pretty much everything. We're also going to be painting the hammer here with Administratum Gray, a fantastic color. You use a ton of ash gray if you're in Vallejo. The Administratum Gray is that citadel color, but it, it highlights um, really well, like a rock color or something like that. And this kind of looked like a big chunk of rock to me. It has some cracks in it and stuff like that, as you can see kind of throughout there. Again, I don't think anything's clean. We're going to be artificially adding some texture later to some other things, but this Administratum Gray is going to be a nice base coat because it can darken a lot because I'm starting a little bit lighter on here and then I can bring that lightness back up. There's a tiny bit of wood in his kind of like backpack kind of thing. I put use some flat earth there. It's a very nice, again, very orangey brown. I'm trying to keep those earth tones kind of throughout this entire mini just to kind of, I think, tie it all, to, all together a little bit, uh, make it seem, you know, it's not clashing too much. There's nothing that's like really stark and standing out. And this flat earth, I think, does that really well. And again, it's kind of a neutral color so I can lower it and I can highlight it to my heart's content, uh, which is very nice. For the pages, the pages I'm using this beige color, um, it won't end up looking like this. Again, everything's dirty, everything's marked up and, and, and nasty. And, um, you know, they didn't make this in a clean factory somewhere. You know, this isn't something they, they bought from China or anything like that, right? This, this thick parchment paper is going to get some treatment. So it's going to darken up a lot. Now I have Mechanicus Standard Gray. This is for all the stonework. There is uh, some, again, on his little backpack candle thing, but then also on the ground. We're going to be doing that on the base as well. This Mechanicus Standard Gray and then Administratum Gray, both Citadel paints, I use a ton of. I think they they accentuate each other really well. The Administratum Gray highlights the other one. And again, you'll see that on those rocks in a little bit, but just a little bit of stonework in here. Uh, it's debatable. I painted it as stone. When you look at it, you can paint it however you want. 
I'm using ivory for the uh, base coat on the candles. Again, we're going to add a wash on that. Um, I tend to use ivory. Ivory is something I recommend you always have. This is a Vallejo color. Uh, they have obviously uh, equivalents in other, other ranges as well, but it's an off-white. Very rarely in the natural world is something pure white or pure black. Even if you buy white paint, you, you buy eggshell and you buy this and you think, oh, that looks white until you see something whiter. Like, okay, now that looks white. But then you could probably find something even whiter and oh no, that's white. So what we use as white is kind of relative here, but the ivory is fantastic for that. I use on eyes a lot as well. Red Oxide is my absolute favorite dark brown. Uh, it is just fantastic. It, you can't darken it very well. You could put like an egg rice or shit, even a Nolan oil on it. It, it might tint it a little bit, the known oil, but it's not. I mean, it's very dark, so you can only kind of go up from it. So it's a very good base coat and then you highlight up from there. Uh, that tends to be what I do anyway. All right, next up we have Calvary Brown or Cavalry Brown. I always say that wrong. I'm seeing very different things. Uh, this Cavalry Brown is a very red brown beautiful color. Um, I, I almost, I pretty much consider it a red, though it says brown in its name. Uh, it, it's a very red brown. I, again, I could kind of, you know, make up what I wanted this book to be. And uh, I tend to go to red, uh, darker red. You guys know how I am. So uh, I thought that kind of fit. Also, I don't know the story around the venerator, but he seems kind of like a judge and jury kind of thing. I imagine him hunting witches in this universe. Witches are kind of uh, these people that are collared even and, you know, uh, assigned to an essentially a night and so I felt it makes it a little bit evil a little bit there too okay now we have that full great copper again and this is for the trim around the book uh, you could do this at the same time if I was to do this again I'd paint the book and then paint all the copper around all, all at the same time but you know it uh, I, especially like the back of the mini, like right now, like I don't have art for the back of the mini. So I kind of had to decide what to do here. And a lot of times I'll stare at a mini and I can't decide. So I'll just start painting. And as you paint, you tend to kind of get, okay, it would look better here. It'd look good like this, or wouldn't it be nice if, nice if that. And uh, all I can say with that is go for broke. In other words, like if, if you're not too sure right away, finish painting the whole thing, that whole area of that, and then you can decide. And you can even maybe keep it on there a little bit, progress the mini, you know, as you add washes, as you add highlights, the look and feel of the miniature will change a lot. And some things that might look glaring now might look work really well uh, later on. Screaming Skull is definitely what I use for most skulls or bones or something like that. Um, it is a very yellow one. You could have like Upshati bone or anything like that that's a little bit more white, a little bit more bleached out. Uh, these uh, kind of yellowish tint to it. it makes it tend to um, seem a bit more fresh, if that makes sense. Um, but <laughs> uh, I, I I like it that way. And again, because it's now that earthy tone. Mechanicus in gray, like I said, on the rocks, uh, you could have done this at the same time. Again, I did not learn from my mistakes. Uh, it, 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 I try to plan a mini out in my head, but at the same time, uh, I sometimes I, I make it up as I go. Sometimes it's just how I feel. Sometimes um, I'm just really excited to move on to the next color. I'm tired of doing one thing. I paint for the joy of painting, not so much to get, you know, a fully painted miniature as, or especially a fully painted game. I just enjoy the, 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 the fine detail work of it. And so I tend just to follow my, what I want to do. So I don't paint it in an ideal order. There are more efficient ways, I suppose, to do this. And sometimes I just have to decide what to do on the base. You just kind of have to paint in the area. It, it blends between the rock and the mossy kind of grass. You see those little pick marks and stuff like that. So I tended to just kind of block in the areas that seemed angular to me and counted that as rock. And then I'll paint the other uh, bit. And by the time you add highlights and stuff like that, it'll look great. Uh, it won't look like a paint by numbers or anything like that. Um, but you'll, you'll notice that I'm just kind of blocking it in there. And it, it, it's kind of hit or miss on what you want to do. Caliban Green is a newer paint that I've used from Citadel, and it is beautiful. I love greens. It's a very rich green, still fairly dark though, so you can highlight it up. I know I wanted extreme highlights on this um, because I wanted it to seem kind of like vegetation. And so I did the same thing with the Broodmother, who, who I've also painted. You can check out the link below to that. Uh, if I was to redo it again, I'd maybe make it a little bit less blue, probably put known oil instead of Drushi Violet on it, but otherwise I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, you live in 
you learn. You, uh, you just try to keep painting. If you're going to keep resetting it, you'll never progress. So uh, just progress on the next mini, which is hopefully what I did here. But the, the base, I think, came out really well. And this is how I'm going to be painting all of their bases. I think it matches the art on the board quite well. So if you want to follow along with that, that is totally fine. But as you can see, I'm just painting kind of anywhere that I didn't paint gray. Um, and it, it, it already kind of stands out. But once we highlight that, oh, it's going to look gonna look awesome it'll look great there's enough texture on there to really pick out a dry brush or two uh, quite well and again this is just a, a beautiful color all right and then you also want to do the base rim with this caliban green as well um, anytime I do a base rim I don't use pure black because again I think it pops a little bit and nothing is really pure black so it'll just always look like you're separated from there uh, so matching the board you're on is helpful but having it still a very dark color so even if I don't have a board or if a board changes a lot in a board game I usually do black gray from Vallejo they have a white gray as well both of those I highly recommend as well because again nothing is typically purely white or purely black those are very good colors for that okay I busted out the iron breaker again out and this is uh, for uh, some of the details on the hand so it's right underneath the book it can be kind of hard to tell and then there's also some clasps as well that are uh, I'm kind of painting on uh, after the fact, essentially. This is a very nice silver because, again, it can be darkened with known oil quite easily, um, but it also uh, is a very good highlight if you want to do that as well. You do scuff marks, you do stuff like that. You can go a, a level higher, I would say, would be like Stormhost Silver from Citadel. Also a very good color. I'll, you'll see that in a little bit later, but this is a very solid steel kind of metal, um, and I felt that it would pop out some of the, the little ornate details he has. Like I said, he has a whole bunch on his hand, some on his armor and stuff like that. His, his kind of arm guard there is probably the most noticeable and there's a few on the front as well but I'm using this sparingly because it is fairly bright and I don't want it to like super pop out if, if that makes sense. Now we also want to get these little clasps on the back to, that kind of hold all the wood together and stuff like that. Um, and, and again, it just helps diversify visually what you're looking at. Um, you'll notice I've used a lot of different browns, a lot of different tans, like the beige versus the, the dark flesh. You could do the same if you're running uh, short on what paints you have. But the more colors you can introduce, I think the better. Uh, you don't notice, oh, you've used five different browns. But your eye will take that in, that kind of visual um, diversity and I think appreciate it a bit more, look a little bit more natural. Because when you look at things, it's not all the same brown. The bark on the on the tree isn't the same as the dirt on the ground, right? So using different browns like that can help. Got some no-no out. That'll be for pretty much all of the silver parts for the most part. That chain mail, it takes it great. It really soaks it in there. Feel free to use quite a bit in there to really add the depth. We're going to highlight it up, of course, as well. I'm also going to add that all the Mechanica standard brown uh, uh, stuff. So like the stones and whatnot. And then uh, he has these like leggings in there whatever if you get a little bit on the inside of the uh, tunic that's fine it's gonna be shadowed anyway so I think it actually kind of fits pretty well so you can see now I've gotten the the, the rocks there but that's kind of the, I think the, the the goal is to just really uh, add pop up the contrast the reason we do that is because even big minis like this light doesn't work on these minis the same way as it does you or me like right now I have this you know I have a whole bunch of light on me right now for the uh, camera but like like if I look to one side my nose is pronounced enough to where it'll cast a shadow right on my face. But when your your nose is this big on a mini, light's just gonna spill over. It's gonna bleed, it's gonna bleed over. And so you're going to not see all those details. So if you fake it, if you or if you purposely make the these highlights a certain way or the shadows a certain way, um, up in that contrast makes this little mini make it seem like light's affecting it the way it should. Um, if it was, you know, true to life and, you know, when you're looking at it, you know, from far away, whatever, from the table, the more contrast you have, especially on a dark miniature like this, dark minis are hard to see, um, to, just because normally we don't, you know, have like huge amounts of light in our game rooms anyway. And so, uh, being able to see the mini on the table and appreciate the details on a darker mini, especially that contrast is going to be key. And so we're going to have to be kind of really smart with our highlights and we'll get to that here soon. It happens after the wash. That being said, I tend to try and do the wash and move on to another part instead of trying to then highlight that and finish that uh, just so that uh, it, it dries while I do that. But ideally, I am checking off things. I like to I have a little checklist. Oh, the tunic, oh, that. And I like to I get some accomplishment when I finish those. So a lot of people will paint everything base color and then everything that and then kind of finish it all at the end. I try to finish bits and pieces if I can. Mentally, that's stimulating to me and it makes me feel like I have accomplished something. So that's why I do it that order. You don't have to, though. If you wanted to um, kind of do that because... 
when you finish something, it can be hard to fix. So if you accidentally oopsie somewhere, well, then now it's a little bit harder, right? Because it's not the base code anymore. Seraphim Sepia. Uh, the difference between Seraphim Sepia and Reichland Flesh Shade. Seraphim Sepia, uh, that sepia tone, right? It's a little bit more orange, uh, a little bit lighter brown. Uh, Reichland Flesh Shade's a slightly darker brown, a little bit more red. Uh, and that's why it's called the flesh shade, right? Because we've got that red blood kind of coming out, unless you're like super albino like me. <laughs> but for most people, you have that. Uh, so again, it just really helps sell the the it all being part of it, dirtying it up. I am letting it pool on the bottom on purpose. Um, you, you can kind of see in the in the finished model here, right? I, I wanted it to kind of be darker down there, a little bit more muddy, right? He's been going through the mud and all that stuff. It, it's not clean. Adding that to the beige as well, those are way too bright. And you get that little bit of the curve. I'm letting it pool there on purpose. It'll also kind of look kind of stainy, if that makes sense. Uh, like, like it's an imperfect parchment. And uh, overall, just I think it looks really good. And then I'm throwing that on the ivory candles as well, uh, just so that they look more like candles and less like, you know, white sticks, essentially. Because again, with no other reference, that ivory just looks like white, right? And then I'm also gonna throw that on top of that uh, hammer. Uh, this was a decision I did. Uh, you could have gone, I think, either way on it. And I'm gonna highlight it back up, of course, but I wanted to uh, accentuate those cracks really well. I could have done known oil, but again, I wanted it as much as possible to feel kind of earth tony. Um, and so with that, I decided to do the Seraphim Sepia. You could probably do either or, depending on, you know, which one you want to do. Uh, going over all of the wood, all of the metal, uh, I, I'm pretty much dousing the miniature in wash at this point, And then that'll all start kind of drying up and all that. It's amazing, though, if you just stop here while it's darkened at all, so you don't get that contrast, it just looks so much better the moment you add some shadow, right? And that's what that wash does. That's, that's the joy of, of having those. When I'm doing a big miniature, I mean, this is a fairly big mini, right? When I'm doing a miniature like this, I do like the Citadel washes because of the pots so I can just dip. Um, if you get something like a Vallejo or an Army Painter or anything like that with a dropper style, uh, you'll have to squirt it out. And then you'll, the, the, the problem is if you don't squirt enough, if you, if you squirt, squirt too much, you just kind of wasted some. If you don't squirt enough, you have to, you know, def, you know, fingle it, you know, unscrew it and squirt more out or whatever, your wash will dry. You want to go quickly with wash because you'll get what they call tide marks or brush marks. Essentially, it'll start to dry very quickly. And if you don't go in the whole area, if you like did a, a stroke here and then went over here and they came back there, that dries. And so then when you add another one, unless you're perfect, you're going to overlap a little bit. And that overlap, makes that line darker. So it makes it very noticeable. You'll see the brush stroke the moment you overlap it because adding two coats to it would darken it up. And you could do that to the whole mini if you wanted a, a stronger uh, you know, little bit there. So if you wanted to say from sepia tint, but wanted it stronger, you can do multiple coats. You can totally do that. Totally legitimate, totally works. But that's why it's darker there at the bottom of the tunic because it pooled, it's layered, right? And so you definitely want to move fast here. So if you are using the dropper, do more, not less. It's, it's worth it. It'll, it'll mess you up big time if you don't. Grey Knight Steel. It's a little bit of a blue tint here. I very much like this. Um, I'm using the side of a brush. I'm not using a dry brush. You could have used a dry brush. The reason I'm not is because I didn't want it to be kind of feathery. As you can see, I'm putting it on specific parts because it's kind of rippled and I wanted to sell that ripple, if that makes sense. I'm also using it here just to kind of purposely put it where I want it to be. So you can kind of see uh, these are curved, right? And so uh, with the curve, I wanted to kind of show that. And a dry brush works on raised bits, but on curved pieces like this, not so much. And you can't control exactly where it goes. It's just kind of wherever it lands, which can lead fairly natural. And you could have done it. I mean, it, it, what you learn in painting is y y you can do the same thing multiple different ways. And it just depends on what you want to do, what you find easiest. And some might be legitimately easier than others. But um, notice this is pretty blocked out. Uh, it's like very much, uh, and I wanted it that way. I wanted it to be like super, like this is obviously a reflection point here. I will dumb that down by adding wash on it a second time. Don't be afraid to use that wash to blend in things. So one of the things it can do very nicely is if you feel your highlights are too strong, or whatever, throw that wash on again and it, and, and, and it tints the part you highlighted a lot more. See, now I've got the no-no out again. That's all I need to do. You put that no-no out again and it blends that in. The dark part, it's not gonna darken that much more, but the light part, it will. And so it, it just kind of dulls it down a little bit, blends it in a little bit more. Um, even though I didn't need to do it in the chain mail, it doesn't hurt it. It'll just pump that contrast even more. You put in a second layer on there. It, I highly recommend it. I don't see a lot of people doing this. A lot of people just, they, like they think in their head, the proper way to paint is to do base coat, wash, Highlight, 
in that order. And honestly, it could be a five, six, seven step process if you want. You can choose a different wash to put on. There's all sorts of things. Feel free to play around. Do what you think is right. You think, oh, you know, I wish it was a little bit more brown. Boom, add some Agrax Earth Shade on there. It's still dark, but it adds a little bit of that brown tint to it. it makes it dirtier. Maybe that's what you wanted it to look like. You know, it could be metal, but it could be dirty metal or slightly rusty metal or whatever it is that you want to do. You can do that. So now I'm back in highlights doing the feet. I, at first, I wasn't going to highlight them at all. All right, now we're going to use gold and we're going to highlight all of the armor trim here. Now, this is not the final highlight. I'm actually going to use silver. I'll talk about that when I do it, um, but I'll, I'll kind of just hint at it that it, it helps with like a reflection point, if that makes sense. And it's still metallic. It doesn't look silver at all, but you can always highlight in gold too. Highlighting gold is kind of hard though, because you have to go to kind of a really dark, almost dirty looking gold to get a, some really good um, uh, tinting to it. You can, of course, always put a wash on it and any kind of orangey wash is good, like a Seraphim Sepia, even a Reikland Flesh Shade works because gold naturally is in that kind of warm red orange spectrum there. So um, this gold here, uh, another property you'll find is that different metallics, especially from different companies, have different level and style of glitter or metallic flakes or anything like that, that they'll, they'll kind of incorporate in there. The gold Vallejo uh, is is a much more reflective metal than this copper I used from uh, uh, Citadel. So even just stopping there helps, uh, and it's a little bit more yellow as opposed to the kind of darker orange or whatever. But we're going to do one final step on that to really pump it up. If in doubt, go with higher contrast, just in general. In fact, to the point where it seems like you shouldn't do more. One of the things you'll note, and I note this all the time, when I'm painting like this, I'm never looking at the mini like this. The mini's way over there on the table, like three feet away in some dimly lit game room, right? I mean, it's not, you, you don't play with minis like this. So you can paint things for different ways. When you see pictures of painted minis, a lot of times you see the close up picture and you would paint a mini differently for wanting it to look good this close, as opposed to this close, as opposed to this close, right? And so that kind of um, accentuates how I decide on when to paint it. I like it to kind of be in between. So it's this is not as high uh, contrast as I would want to if I wanted it to look as good as possible on the table far away from me. It's kind of in between where it looks good there and it looks good up here, but it's not like perfect in either way. I prefer that, but again, if, if the, the more contrast you put in there, the better it'll look farther away because you can see the shapes more because you're just looking at the tiny little details. Okay, so I got beige back out and I'm actually adding that to now the highlight of here. So again, you could, this is one of the things where it's kind of like a chicken and egg thing, right? Where you could um, actually, you know, like, because I used it on the, on the paper, put it on, like, put the wash on the tunic and then use beige only once right? Do the page on that. But I also used the wash on the book. And so, you, you know, do you, do you get what I'm saying? You kind of have to, at some point, you're going to have to double dip. You're going to have to go back to something you, you did before. And that's just kind of the nature of things and and and, and how how I tend to plan paints anyway. I, I don't mind reusing something like that. I'm trying to be super efficient. I'm just trying to enjoy the process. Right now, as I adjust the camera, uh, <laughs> I am actually, it, this is fairly watered down and uh, I'll talk about that in a moment, but I'm just doing kind of around the highlight. And I like to actually, a lot of people do the edge of a raised part, like the edge of the brush, right? Cause you get that super fine. I like going dead on with the tip because it'll slightly overlap the, the, that, you know, so it, it, it kind of goes like that, right? And then you're painting on either side of it. It kind of blends it in. When you're highlighting, if it looks like it's too much, you're probably just right. When it's wet, it's going to reflect any lights, especially in a painting video like this with all the lights on it. If you paint with a, a, like a hardcore light, it's going to look brighter than when it dies or dries. And that's because, it, again, it's wet. So it's kind of, um, uh, you know, reflecting that light a little bit. So uh, any any wet paint will look brighter than it'll be when it, when it dries. And you might have noticed that naturally. So just keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes it'll seem like a big step and it doesn't have to be. And again, if you go too hard, if you go too much into that step, you can always do something like what I, you've seen me do a few times, which is touch it with my finger. I'll talk about that more when I do the book because uh, I do it specifically there on purpose and then on the final part of the uh, the armor as well because you can use it as a tactic too. But um, you'll, you'll see every now and then I'll, nope, I don't want that and I'll just erase it. Um, it, it's so wet it, 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 that it, or it's thin and stuff like that that my little finger dab, the paint's gone. The paint's gone. It didn't really do any harm. You can kind of keep going at it. Oh, I blotched a little bit there. That's fine. Finger dab, go go for it again. I wouldn't like wipe a mini with it per se, unless it's something you're trying to do. I'm focusing less on the bottom. I'm trying to get that 
um, edge. So that's noticeable, especially the layers, right? Because you want to see that, you know, oh, he has this back layer and then the, the, the layer kind of around his legs. Uh, but again, a little far less there, if that makes sense. Um, so just trying to, again, get that contrast up so you see those ripples so that even far away, I can I can really see that um, really stand out and pronounced. And we'll we'll add a texture and stuff uh, as well to this at, at kind of a, a later time, which I think is really nice when it actually ends up doing that. But for now, we're just kind of blocking in those those shapes, if that makes sense. The the the, the shape of the, who, the modeler, the sculptor, uh, Toby, in this case, I actually know his name. So uh, what Toby put on here, I'm just trying to accentuate. I'm just trying to enhance what the sculptor, the modeler already did for us. Um, and then we'll work on a little bit more. Now, you, you'll notice here, I have a far less amount on my brush now. It's the exact same color, but you, what I did is that instead of just like rolling it on a, a paper towel, I actually kind of like blotched it in there. And now I'm just kind of rubbing in between that part so I can still kind of pump that contrast. It also adds a little bit of texture. The hair bristles naturally kind of flay out when I lay it like that, like I'm putting more pressure into it than I normally would. And that kind of eases it out and I'm going down and then lifting up and that helps kind of feather it out a little bit too. But you can, as you can see, I'm going back and forth depending on how I want it. The more I work with it, right, the more layers I'm adding onto it. By the time I get to one end, it's already dry on another end. So I can kind of keep working on it as much as I want. So I have this beige out again and I noted beige again because this is actually like straight beige, right? So this is like a second layer of it, if that makes sense, to the point where these layers on top of each other are pretty much just showing beige now. There's not a lot of that dark flesh underneath. And so that's that's why I'm being a little bit more careful on these highlights and really just kind of accentuating that. And the more time you spend with a mini, the better it'll typically be. There are is a point of diminishing returns, of course, and there's times where you can have a great mini and then mess it up. So I'm not saying that, it's not a perfect thing, but in general, uh, the more time you spend with something, the better. Um, when when you see stuff on like Instagram or something like that, and like, oh, look at this wing, and it's like just the wing painted, they could have spent eight hours that day on the, on just that wing. Uh, not every really good painter is like that. There are people like Sam Lins that just like, you know, with a dollar brush, just <laughs> I'm done. And it looks fantastic and they win awards. But the people, the, us mortals, uh, you know, the, the less godlike powers we have, um, the, just take your time with it. Uh, you can get really far with certain tricks. I'm kind of showing one where I spent hours on this. Now, this is important. So I have very little and I'm very lightly touching it. But you see how I'm doing these hash marks and all that? And, and perhaps you can even still see it here. Um, but it adds kind of a texture to it. Now, this is a smooth... Thing, right, so this is me inserting a texture to the miniature that it doesn't exist. So I'm doing kind of like little hash mark stuff. I'm trying to make it look kind of leathery. It's kind of the the attempt there, almost like a rawhide rag. If you've ever had one of those for like in your car or something like that, that's kind of what I had in mind. Um, and that's partly based off the color. And then uh, again, I just wanted things to be worn and scuffed and rubbed and you know scraped and and whatnot. So um, adding this, I think, really kind of just again, it's something subtle. Um, once it's dry. Uh, then, you know, like, like it's not as noticeable, but your, 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 uh, eyes still take it in. This is what I'm talking about. So I have very little on my brush and I'm just rubbing it, but then I use my finger to smudge it. It's just like the blur tool. If you ever played in like, um, Photoshop and you get the little blur tool and it actually is like a finger, right? Same concept there. There's that black gray. It's a fantastic color. I highly suggest you buy it, even if you don't use it on this one. Um, there is no, there are no words on here, but I wanted words on here. But obviously, I can't write that small. So what I decided to do was just do little, little swirls. Now I did not plan to do little symbols. See that big symbol there? I did. That is me working with what I have. So I'm trying to do these little swirls and it very light touch very light touch, a good point on your on your brush on this point. The, like the lighter the touch, the better. Just kind of, you know, do little swirls, little symbols. If I blotched it or messed it up or did something wrong, I then made it a symbol. And, you know, with the whole like witch hunter kind of vibe I'm getting here where he's like, you know, uh, judging certain things or whatever, or whatever it is he's doing, I feel like he might have a book that details a lot of that. So that's what I'm doing there. But the symbols are just there, me dealing with what I happen to accidentally do making it work for me. Here's that Stormhost Silver out. This is again, a very, very light silver. This is actually watered down and Stormhost Silver is already quite watered down. Uh, it's definitely um, a, a thinner one. And what I'm doing here is just accentuating the, just the, the, the tippity tops 
of a lot of that gold here, but I'll use it on his armor as well to accentuate uh, his scratches and scuff marks there. Uh, just again, upping that contrast. The no oil seeped in there. It already has that Iron Warriors paint on there. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm adding little scratches and stuff like that too. Again, I'm inserting stuff that's not on the model. This is kind of a, a more custom look at it. I wanted him to be pretty dinged up, pretty uh, as ornate as he is. I don't think anything is super clean here. Um, it's one of my biggest complaints about how uh, Games Workshop paints their Space Marines. I feel like they're all like models on a runway. They all look so perfect and pristine. And um, as much as they adore those things and clean them, I mean, when my guys are in battle and they're shooting that stuff, they're not worried about how shiny their armor is. So um, I, always, I always want to dirty it up. Plus, this is the funnest thing you'll ever do. I, I swear weathering armor is or, or dirtying up any kind of miniature is just so funny because you can just add layer and layer and layer on it. And all those colors and all those slashes and all those brush marks work so well. Again, same thing there on the chain mail there. Okay, now we need to do the flames on the candles. This was probably my least favorite part, not because it's so small, but because the flames on here are really just nubs. They're not really flames. Now, this is not a final production uh, miniature. Uh, I don't believe so anyway. Uh, so it might have changed a little bit, but uh, the, the, they're very small flames too. They're not like um, cartoonish flames. They're more realistic in that sense, but it's very hard to paint with because it's just it's, it's, it's just a straight flat oval. So I'm starting with this flash glitz yellow, which is a fantastic, very bright, very warm yellow. Almost a little bit like like you've added a little bit of white to normal yellow. That's what I view flash lights yellow as. It's just it's just a slightly brighter version of it. And we're actually going to go even brighter at some point. But uh, that's how you started out with is just that little bit. And again, um, I, I then uh, water it down and I get it around there too. Kind of add a little bit of a glow. So now there's Evil Sun's Scarlet. This is a very bright red. I uh, count this as like a sports car red, right? It's very almost a little slightly orangey, very bright red, very bright red. And I'm just putting that now on the, the very tips of that little oval on each one. So it goes, it, it starts out brightest and gets darkest. That's how fire works. Don't paint it backwards. It's not, it doesn't get brighter as it goes out. It gets darker um, and then turns into eventually smoke and stuff like that. Right? So now we have dorm yellow. Dorm yellow is essentially a edge uh, paint. I don't even know if they sell these anymore uh, because people scoffed at them for a long time. I like them just because they're convenient. It's really just adding white to it. But that white helps blend it into these candles that were ivory. And so this is a very bright, bright whitish yellow that I can paint kind of all around there to kind of add that glow. You could use an ink or something like that, but you gotta be very careful. This is a very light candle here. Okay, so now we have a tiny bit of Agrax or shade, and that's just that little tip, that little bit of smoke at the very end there, and it just helps stop it, if that makes sense. And it adds that kind of layers. Um, this is me trying to make them seem like flames when they're really just nubs. So it's again, kind of faking not, not a texture per se, but but uh, faking what's actually there, if that makes sense. And a special guest appearance from my uh, little napkin there that I'm using to <laughs> to, to get rid of some paint. But uh, yeah, that's that, that's pretty much my standard thing is going in that order. Okay, so now we have some green skin. This is an army painter paint, um, but it is a very nice in between. It's just slightly, slightly uh, a little bit more yellow. Right, so we're essentially adding more and more yellow into our greens. That's kind of the way I did it anyway. Uh, so it can seem kind of mossy and stuff like that. With the dry brush, try and be a little bit careful. You can see I'm using one of the Army Painter dry brushes. They're very small. Uh, now we're using Hemp Rope. This is like full on yellow green. And it's it's a great last one to kind of just put on there and it really accentuates it. And, and hopefully you can kind of see you know, uh, how, how it turns out. Maybe, uh, you know, you can see on the video, I suppose. Uh, and then we added some, just another layer of it, just again, uh, putting it on as much as possible. Then the administratum gray on the rocks, then another Caliban green on the uh, rim. This is partially to add another layer, but also as you can see, there's a little, after dry brushing it on, right? So after after putting that on, you, you, get, you sometimes get a little little paint pigments on there uh, just, just naturally from it. So just clean it up. I always try to clean the base towards the very end here. So we got some flat earth again. This wasn't planned at first, but again, feel free to change direction and change what you're doing. Um, I wanted the, the, there's not a lot of wood on here and I wanted it to really pop as much as I could, but I didn't want it to be bright and silly either. So I added flat earth again to bring it back up to that level after the a wash that I put on there. So this is just the raised part. So hopefully you see the lines and, uh, and 
the grain and the wood a little bit better this way. So again, just trying to highlight that up and make that look nice. But uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's that's really all she wrote. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that painting. Again, this is such a cool mini, such a cool mini. I love the way he looks. I love the style of him. I think he looks great. Um, if you do paint him, I would love to see your rendition of it. So feel free to link it to me either. Let me like link it in a comment. Right when you when you do get him and you know just any comment in any video and say hey I painted the venerator and you can I'll follow the link to Imgur or whatever or you can post it on the Facebook group that is in the description below of course or anywhere else that I might be around I would love to see what you do and if you have any questions feel free to ask them as well have a great rest of your day enjoy Osorn once it arrives for you or if you already have it and you're watching this video I hope you are enjoying it Mr. Future Man and with that out of the way have a great rest of your day take care guys.